Hello friends and welcome to another episode of the Woldenburg podcast. My name is Emily and I'm coming to you from Kentucky in the United States where I live with my wonderful hardworking husband and our beautiful little boy. It is a very rainy and dreary day outside. It is supposed to rain pretty much all day today and then we're supposed to have this huge cold front come in where it's going to be very cold over the weekend. So the lighting is a little bit wonky. I've got a couple lamps here. I'm sitting as close up to the window as I can. Hopefully the quality is not too bad. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been a minute since I filmed a podcast. December was just very, very busy, as it always is. And then we got sick right around Christmas, and then there's the New Year stuff, and it's just one thing after the other. However, we're here today. The baby's napping. Um, hopefully, we'll have enough time today to be able to get this podcast out. A quick note here at the beginning. This is going to be different from my normal podcast episodes. There's going to be minimal knitting content to share, but we're going to be talking about some knitting goals and plans or creative goals and plans that I have for 2024. And then um, after that, at the end, we'll do a little bit more, I guess you could say, personal goals and plans and um so we're going to talk about all the creative anything related to creative stuff first and then I'll just make a little note so if you're not interested in any sort of like my personal goals for 2024 um you can sign off and come back for the next video um but yeah so there's going to be a little bit of actual knitting to show you um well less than I hoped for because I made some Christmas presents and of course in the busyness of December completely forgot to take any sort of pictures and um, they've all been gifted so I don't have those anymore and then um, my husband one of the projects that I made was a hat for him for Christmas and I'm pretty sure he either has it with him at work or it's somewhere in the house where he's stuck it so I just don't have it but I have the yarn that I use for it I'm going to talk about that and talk about the pattern that I use and the needle size and all of that fun stuff um and then I do actually have one gift that I made for my husband that I can share with you um so yeah this is just going to be a lot more of a chatty episode I hope that you're enjoying it um I have a nice warm cup of tea in this beautiful mug that was a gift from my mother-in-law um, she is very good at getting gifts. <laughs> um, it's one of my favorite mugs that we have. And it's just a cup of peach, country peach passion tea, I believe it's what it's called, from Celestial Seasonings. I love a good cup of fruit tea, um, or fruity tea. It's, it's probably my favorite. Um, I am caffeine-free and have been for the last almost two years at this point, um, because I was pregnant and then I'm still breastfeeding my little boy, so I just stay away from caffeine. Um, I'll have the occasional cup of like decaf tea or a sip of something that my husband's drinking. Like if he has a cup of tea and I want to see what it tastes like, uh, I'll taste it. But other than that, nothing caffeinated. So I really enjoy all of my herbal teas. And yeah, so that's what I was going to say. Get a cup of tea, cozy up, snuggle up if it's cold where you're at, and uh, maybe have a bit of knitting or crafting or just relax and have a snack and a cup of tea. Um, yeah, let's get into it. <laughs> so first off, I'm going to show you the one actual gift that I made that I can have here. It's a duck. <laughs> If you watch my Vlogmas videos, um, you will have seen this already, but this is a little duck that I made for my husband. Um, I crocheted it. It is crocheted out of the Hobby Lobby Yarn B I Love This Cotton Yarn, which is honestly one of my favorite yarns to work with. It's very soft. I, I just love cotton. I love cotton so much. Um, I have done a lot more sewing or I have been sewing longer than I've been knitting, um, or more seriously sewing. I don't know. Anyway, and my favorite fabrics to work with are all cottons. I love cotton fabrics. They are just, they're my favorite to wear. They're my favorite to sew with. I love it. And so it's been really enjoyable to work with a bit more cotton over, um, in 2023. I just, I've, I've really liked it. I've, 
made this project. Um, one of the other gifts that I made was some um, like face scrubbies. I just did like a circle. Uh, it's like the inside of a granny square but like a closed granny square is a bunch of double crochets and I made a bunch of those for a couple of my sisters and um, that was really fun to work on and it was just all in this I love this cotton yarn. It's probably my favorite cotton yarn I've worked with so far um, but anyway back to the duck. <laughs> so very cute little duck and I got the pattern from this book, which was actually a Christmas present to me um, for Christmas of 2022 from um, my husband's family, and it's Whimsical Stitches by Lauren Epsi, SP, <laughs> and it is full of all these different really like cute, fun little patterns of different animals and plants and foods, like. I was laughing with my younger sister about it. I was telling her, I was just like, I don't know why you would want to have like, um, here, let me show you as an example, a cupcake. I'm not sure why somebody would want it. Maybe, maybe people out there do and they just want to have it to like set up on a shelf or something. I can foresee these being very useful once, um, you know, my little boy's a little bigger and I have more kids and stuff, um, that making some of these food items for like a little play kitchen would be so much fun. Um, but there's a donut. <laughs> um, let me see if I can find a, a better picture of it. There we go. There's donuts and a little mug. So it's like, it's got some of those things in it where I'm like, I wouldn't make those unless I was making them with, like without the eyes and stuff as like toy food. In that case, I think it would be so much fun. But the um, the duck I made is this duck. As you can see, the colors are quite a bit different. I just tried to get it as close-ish as I could um, with the colors that the were available in the I Love This Cotton yarn. Um, and it was crocheted on a size G crochet hook. And then I ordered a giant pack of these 12 millimeter um, safety eyes off of Amazon for like seven or eight dollars. And um, I couldn't get them at like Hobby Lobby and for in like a small pack. And the closest Joanne is about 30 minutes away now since we've moved into Kentucky. So I was just like, you know what? This is not going to be the last little stuffed animal thing that I'm going to be making. I'll just get the whole big box of them. Um, so yeah, and there's a, several other projects in here that I would like to make. Um, the one that I, I'm hoping, I'm very much hoping to get to this year is this little turtle. I would love to make this little guy for my, my little boy. Um, I think I've mentioned it before, but one of our running jokes after he was born was that he was our little turtle child because I was wearing him in my, in the baby carrier all the time, all the time. He was constantly in the baby carrier. And so his little head would be poking out and he'd be like, <laughs> so we called him our turtle child. <laughs> and so I love the idea of making a, um, a little crocheted turtle for him. And that one's really cute. And then the other one that I really, really like is this little whale. It's so cute. And there's actually, um, yeah, there's instructions in here to make it into a little narwhal, which is even cuter. <laughs> Um, so I'd love to do that. And then here's just a peek at some of the other animals that are in there. Um, I think the cow is really cute. The pig I don't think is as cute. I think it just looks a little bit funny. <laughs> um, but there's that. And then there's like, there's a jellyfish that you can make. And then, um, what else is there in here? There's like all kinds of different things. Cause then there's like, um, fruits. So there's like a peach, onions, pineapples, tomatoes, eggplants, berries. Like there's all kinds of random stuff in there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun and it was really fun to work on it. Um, here's some of the plants they have in there. And then this is at the bakery section. There's a pie right there. And then all those things. And then the last section is at the market. Which again, like, I think these would be so, so cute. Like there's, look at the pineapple. The pineapple is hilarious. These would be so fun to make for a little child to play with. Um, yeah, so I, I have plans to do that at some point. But right now we don't have any sort of like a little toy kitchen or anything. So I'm not gonna mess with it. Um, but eventually, like maybe when baby Tam is like 
four or five and is more interested in that sort of a thing. Um, that would be a really fun either birthday or Christmas present to make. But yeah, so this is the only actual finished object I have to share with you. Um, but I love it. It turned out very, very cute. And my husband has been requesting more. <laughs> I don't know why. He's so weird. Why does he want ducks? Husbands, what can you do? They're entertaining. <laughs> so the um, main Christmas presents that I made was several, I knit several um, hats. I knit one for my husband, one for my father-in-law, and for one of my brother-in-laws. And I used um, this yarn, Drops Charisma, in a few different colors. Um, this is just one of the contrast colors I ended up using. And I used the Pearl Soho Classic Ribbed Hat. That pattern calls for, I believe it's DK weight yarn. This is very much a worsted weight yarn. So what I ended up doing is I went up one needle size, if I remember correctly. Um, I've just been kind of doing it on autopilot because I've been making so many of them. Um, because before Christmas I made two of them for my little boy and um, so I've made like five of them in the last few months. <laughs> and I'm planning to make another one. That's part of why I have everything together in this beautiful little bag from Susan of Delightful Works. And um, Anyway, so I went up one needle size to a US size four, and then I went down several sizes. So for my little boy, I used the numbers for the baby size, and then for my husband and father-in-law, etc., I used the numbers for the, I think it's the child size, because I wanted them to be pretty close fitting. And I was originally worried when I was making the first one that it was going to be too snug, but then my husband tried it on and he was like, no, this is perfect. So, um, I believe for the baby size, it's, and it's a free pattern, so not spoiling anything. Um, for the baby size, I believe it was 84 stitches, and for the child size, it was 96 stitches. I think that's what it was. Um, and they turned out, they turned out perfectly. I just knit them quite long and then followed the instructions for the decreases and they were super easy, super simple. I was able to just kind of autopilot them. Um, I worked on them a lot when I was kind of watching my little boy run around outside or um, playing in the shed in the backyard. They were just kind of that sort of mindless thing that I could easily work on around him because there wasn't a lot of stuff going on. He's kind of a rascal sometimes in that he likes to steal whatever I'm knitting on. He loves like yarn and like squishing it and playing with it and it's really cute but at the same time when I'm working on something it's ornery. <laughs> anyway so this was a really these were really good projects to work on around him because um yeah there wasn't a lot going on and um it works because then I made all these gifts and then another one of my brother-in-laws, he has a birthday coming up and he had mentioned to my husband that he actually wanted one. So I was like, this is perfect. I'll just make him a hat for his birthday and it'll be lovely. I almost forgot that I do actually have another finished object to share with you, which is a very long time coming. So let me grab that quickly and I will be right back. Okay, so this is a very long-term whip that I actually finished a couple days ago. I was gonna block it, but then I didn't get to it, so it hasn't been blocked yet, so technically it's not like 100, 100, 100% done, but guys, I finished my Tulsa tea, which is so crazy. <laughs> I was looking on uh, my phone, my little boy has recently discovered that he loves watching videos of himself from when he was a baby all the way up. Like, I have a lot of videos of him. And so we'll sit there and like watch a bunch of random videos of him doing really cute things. And I happened to realize that I started this in June of 2023. It has taken me like six plus months to get this done, <laughs> which is wild. This is so crazy. To be fair, that was not working on it consistently. It was in timeout for a lot of that time. Purely working on it time frame, it probably only would have been like a month or two to get it done, but it's done. Like that's what matters. It's all done. I'm very excited. I actually wove in all of the ends. That's what I, all of the all of the knitting has been done for probably two three weeks. 
but I finally finished weaving in the last few ends um, because for each of these color stripes, I actually cut the yarn and um, so there was tails for all of, all of it <laughs> and then all on the sleeve as well. This is the Tulsa Tea pattern by Rebecca of the Crea Bea podcast and it is just a lovely, classic, simple, basic raglan t-shirt design and as soon as she started talking about it, I knew that I wanted to make it. Um, I tried to do the testing, but I didn't get picked, which is totally fine. <laughs> um, but uh, I bought it as soon as it came out, and I had plans for making um, at least two or three before it was even published. Um, and I, I love it. It's a very, it's a wonderful pattern. It's, again, it's, it's like a classic wardrobe staple. Like, that's what it is. Um, I am not a huge fan of most t-shirts, like just regular t-shirts you buy from the store. Um, a lot of them are too thin for me. Um, I have a fuller bust, so I have to wear um, bras that have like chunkier straps and stuff on them. Um, and so a lot of the really thin t-shirts just don't work for me. And I don't like how they feel anyway. Um, and I typically prefer, again, I love cotton. I love the heavier weight cotton t-shirts. Um, one of the things that I ended up doing last summer was I actually, I just went to Hobby Lobby and bought a bunch of their like, is it Gildan, um, hundred percent cotton t-shirts. And I wore those because I actually, I like the thickness of the fabric. I like that it's not see-through at all. Um, and they're just, the feel of the fabric is what I really like. However, those are not very feminine. And I, I tried to do it where I, I chopped them a little bit shorter and I added ties in the front and that sort of worked, but they're still not as feminine as I would like them to be. So my thinking is, is that if I make a bunch of these Tulsa tees in like cottons, I can replace those t-shirts with knitted t-shirts and I would love that. So I have one, I have one done, hallelujah. <laughs> and I have plans this year um, to make at least like three more. <laughs> I have all the yarn to make probably four or five. Um, so I would love to work on several of those this year. And I don't think the next one would take as long. Part of the problem was, is because I did such fat stripes, I kind of ran into a dilemma where I, I didn't get enough blue yarn to use it for all of the, like the ribbing details and like the top here and everything. Um, I was running out of blue yarn. Long story short. <laughs> um, but I ended up being able to kind of do a little bit of a compromise and I made it a little bit shorter than I had thought I needed it to be. Um, I realized that the body, the length of it was already pretty much perfect. Um, so it, I really like how it looks. I really like how it turned out. Um, I'm excited to block it and see if it'll kind of grow a little bit. I'm very curious to see what this yarn is going to do. This is the Drops Bell yarn, which is a blend of viscous linen and cotton or something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, and I used, as you can see, three different colors. <laughs> um, sorry, it's kind of making my nose itch. I can't tell if it's like hair that's getting on my face or what. <laughs> um, I believe I knit the fourth size and I say that because my plan was <laughs> to knit, I believe, to cast on the numbers for one size and then um, to get the smaller neck opening. If you cast on one size down, to get this, you'll get a smaller neck opening and then you can increase right after the ribbing to um, get to the correct numbers for your size. So I thought I was doing one size. Well, it ended up that I had accidentally underlined all this the numbers for a slightly bigger size than I was planning. So I think I was originally planning to make the third size and I ended up making the fourth size, I think. <laughs> Again, six months. It's been a long time coming. <laughs> so I, I believe this is the fourth size. Um, and I mean, it works. Like it's definitely a little bit oversized. Also my light changed. There we go. Um, it's a little bit oversized, but I think it's it's quite drapey, this yarn, so I think it'll be fine. 
Um, and I use a size 5 for the neck ribbing and a size 7 for the body. Um, yeah, I think that's about all I have to say about it for now. Um, I'm hoping again to get it blocked and then perhaps for the next video I'll be able to um, wear it for the next podcast episode. But yes, I'm very, very, very pleased to have this done. Um, I honestly have done very, very little knitting or crocheting of any sort since I finished all of the presents for Christmas. <laughs> I have done basically nothing. I've done a few rows here and there, but I don't know. I've just been a little bit of like tired and the most sick and everything else going on that I just haven't had the energy for it. <laughs> So, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm, I'm going with it. I'm not trying to push myself to do a bunch of knitting because the thing that I have to remind myself of often is that it's not a race. Like, there, I don't have to knit or sew or craft or create. Like, there's nothing saying that I have to. I do it because I want to and it's a hobby that I enjoy. And so... There's these ebbs and flows and if there's a time where I'm just not feeling it and I just in the evenings want to sit and read a book, that's okay. <laughs> and I just, I have to remind myself of that, that it's not a race. It's not a competition. Just because somebody else might be knitting up a storm doesn't mean I have to. So, <sighs> I think that's about all of the actual like knitting projects I have to share with you. I have one other one that's a work in progress, but I'm actually going to share that a little bit later when I'm talking about some of the um, knitting plans that I have for this year. This is so good. This is one of my favorite teas, this peach tea from Celestial Seasonings. It's kind of ruined every other peach tea that I've had so far. Um, every other peach tea just kind of tastes fake and gross. <laughs> this actually tastes peachy to me. Anyway, we're not here to talk about tea, although I love talking about tea. The one other thing that I quickly wanted to share with you um, before we get into kind of the knitting plans and stuff is a really fun thrift store find that I found yesterday. Goodwill yesterday. I, I don't know if I can really properly completely show you this um, because of if I step back there, it's going to be too dark. So I'm going to try and show it to you. I found this beautiful, beautiful quilt. And it is, it's probably a small twin size. Like it's, it's kind of in between like a throw blanket and a twin size blanket. It's so soft and comfy. I've already washed it and everything. So it's all, all clean. I can snuggle in it. <laughs> I basically, as soon as I got home from the store, I was like, all right, in the washer, in the dryer. Um, this looks like something that has been made more recently. It doesn't look like a super antique quilt, um, like the fabrics and things. Um, so maybe it's from like 80s or 90s or something. I have no idea. But it's a tied quilt, which honestly I love. I have wanted to make a tied quilt. I've wanted to make a quilt in general for a very long time, but I've wanted to make like a tied quilt where instead of doing the quilting all over the top of it, you tie it with like, I think it's usually yarn. It's like yarn scraps. Um, <clears throat> and it's so, it's very, it gives it a very like lofty, more like a comforter feel rather than a quilt feel. And I just, I love it. All these fabrics and the colors. And the thing is, I had to get it because this was so sad. It, it has a tag on it that says made with love by mom. And I was like, somebody took their quilt that their mom made for them to Goodwill. <sighs> and the other thing that I really love about it is that it has so many imperfections in it. Like it, it doesn't matter. It's a cozy, comfy quilt. But like the seam lines, I don't know if I can show it to you very well, especially with this thread here. So see how they overlap there? The corners are supposed to be what touch. I think there's one spot on here. Um, it's going to be hard to show it because it's all really hidden by the, the ties. But like this, where the, the corner to corner is what it's supposed to be. But most of the seams, honestly, are really off. 
and I love it. It gives it so much character and it's in like fantastic condition. There's one spot, where'd it go? I just saw it. <laughs> there's one spot where there's a, um, I just need to go in and, and hand sew it back together. There's just um, one seam that came, there it is, that came apart. Oh, I don't know if you can even see it. Yeah, right there. And I just need to hand sew those those two little um, quilt patches, pieces together. But I love all of the fabrics in it and it's just, it's lovely. And my thought is, is that this can kind of sit out here in the living room and be something that we can kind of snuggle under. Or if eventually someday if we have a daughter, it would be a beautiful little girl's bed quilt. Like, oh, I love it. So that was a very fun thrift store find that I found yesterday. I was really happy about it. I got it for $6. Like, it's a gorgeous handmade quilt for $6. Like, oh. Oh. thrift stores, they're dangerous. Okay, so that's the end of all proper stuff. We're gonna talk about some knitting plans and, well, it's not knitting plans. It's like knitting, sewing, creative plans. Um, and then just sort of some personal plans. So first off, my number one thing that I want to do this year is to use yarn from Stash. And I have, I think I've mentioned this before, Ever since my little boy was born back in 2022, um, I have been really, really bad about buying a lot of yarn <laughs> and um, not knitting as much. And it's something I've talked about this with my husband before and a big reason of why I have bought so much yarn is because I am not able to knit as much. I do not have as time, as much time to just create. And so it's a way for me to feel like I'm still being creative by buying yarn and planning projects. But then my rate of knitting is so much slower than my rate of yarn purchasing that it's just getting a little overwhelming. And I don't have a huge yarn stash, but I have enough yarn to make probably like 20 projects. Um, and that's counting like socks. So, you know, like, but so this year, my goal is to really lean into and focus on contentment, like being content with what I have, being frugal minded and um, like using using the gorgeous, beautiful yarns that I have, like all of the yarns that I have, I love them. They're so beautiful. Um, but to just actually work towards using them. And not only have I bought a lot of yarns last year, I was so blessed and I had several people gift me a decent amount of yarn and it was just such, it was so lovely and so generous. And again, something I was talking about with my husband, like the best way to value these gifts that you've been giving is to use them and to not have them just sitting in my stash and l languishing there but to actually bring them to life, like make them into projects. So it's something I was thinking about a lot, especially like in November when all of the sales started happening for Black Friday, because normally, also sorry, it's getting very dark. <laughs> normally when it comes to like Black Friday, I love to take advantage of the sales. I, I love being frugal and getting yarn that is heavily discounted. However, this year when it got time, I still purchased some things, but it was almost like it didn't have the same level of like joy or um, what's another good way of putting it? Justification maybe? <laughs> it was almost like, do I really need to buy anything because I have a lot of stuff already? So even though I'm taking advantage of the sales, is it really the best thing to do? And so my hope is, is that until November this year to not buy, I have a couple exceptions, but to not buy any yarn so that then when it comes to November, I can do some plotting and planning throughout the rest of the year and figure out, okay, these are like the six things that I would really, really like to get. Um, because there's a bunch of yarns that I would love to try out, but I just haven't because you get to that point and then you're like, I don't want to spend any more money on yarn. So the exceptions that I have made 
are as follows. One, I can buy, I can purchase yarn if it's for a specific gift knit, specifically like baby knits. I don't have a lot of like baby friendly yarns in my stash. Um, so if it's something where I'm trying, I want to knit a gift for somebody who's having a baby or um, I'd also like to make a few things for our local pregnancy resource center. If it's not something that I'm planning to make for a while, then hold off on, on purchasing it. But if it's something where I'm like, I'm going to get the yarn today to start this gift today, then I can purchase it. Um, the second exception is, <laughs> and this is sort of like a, a Christmas birthday gift, so it kind of works out. Um, Holly of Mystery Mouse Knitting Podcast and Yarn Co. Um, mentioned that she is potentially going to be doing another Red Wall yarn collection. And it was one of those things that I told my husband, I was like, as a gift for me, I would love to purchase something from that collection. If she does indeed do it, she may not do it, which is totally fine. If she does, I'm allowed to purchase some yarn from that um, Redwall collection release. The third one is if Hobby Lobby has, um, they'll periodically do it where they'll massively clearance um, a decent amount of yarn. And it is frugally minded to purchase that yarn at that time for projects and things. Specifically, again, baby garments and knits or blankets. I would love to make some more blankets. Um, I've been really kind of feeling that itch. I want to make some crochet blankets and stuff, but I don't necessarily have a lot of yarn that would work very well for blankets. So if Hobby Lobby ends up doing a big clearance sale for whatever reason sometime throughout the year, that's when I'm allowed to go and, and take advantage of that and buy some yarn for blankets or baby things. Um, but yeah, so those are the, the three exceptions. If it's for a specific gift, if it's from the Mystery Mouse Yarn Co. Red Ball collection, or if Hobby Lobby is clearancing yarn. Other than that, I don't want to buy any yarn until November. <laughs> the, the thing is, is that it would be nice to do things like um, sample knitting or like swaps and things like that. I did a 12 Days of Christmas swap with Stephanie of Texas Peach Knits, which was so much fun. It was absolutely lovely. And so things like that, if opportunities like that come up, I'm totally fine with that. Um, if it swaps or again, like if I do, if I'm able to do some sort of sample knitting where it's an exchange for more yarn, um, that's fine if people give me yarn again like that's fine it's just for me personally i don't want to purchase any yarn unless it fits within those three criteria the other thing is is i do not want to purchase any sewing or knitting patterns at least until june um ideally throughout the whole year like maybe around december if i really save and look at and pick like these are the patterns i would love to have I've, again, been a little bit bad about buying knitting patterns, and I love the projects, and I want to make projects from them, but it's sort of the same thing. I've had less knitting time, less crafting time, and so I've bought things involving crafts, <laughs> whether it's craft supplies or, like, patterns, um, to feel like I'm still being creative, and I need to work on not doing that. So... I'm hoping to really, again, focus on knitting patterns from my knitting pattern library or sewing patterns from my sewing pattern library um, and just really leaning into that. I had the thought this morning that um, I was, I'm rereading some Louis L'Amour books, which I love and highly recommend, and just his descriptions of different people and characters and that time, that, that lifestyle back in the West where it was just it was very limited resources, like for like food and stuff, like let alone creative craft and things. And it really made me think about like women back in those days where they really, really treasured the things that they were able to use for being creative. Now, they also had to do things like sewing and knitting to provide clothing for their families. But like the beautiful quilts and things that they made, like, it was just, they loved all of their things. And it just made me stop and think about, have I really thought about my craft supplies? And do, when I think about them, do I think, oh, I love them so much. I have, these are my prized and treasured possessions. Like these are, these are my, 
my things that enable me to be creative or has it felt more like a weight of like, oh, I really need to get stuff made. And it's tended towards the latter. And I want to try and reclaim some of the joy of having crafting supplies by being content and using what I have. Um, so honestly, that's kind of like my big thing. Like people talk about your word for the year and I really want to hone in on like contentment and not just going out and buying tons of stuff. Not that I do, but I do for me. I have been for me. <laughs> um, my battery light's flashing, so I'm gonna swap out the battery real quick and we'll be back. Okay, so the next couple of, of sort of plans or hopes for this year are things to help with using up my stash. There are a couple of knit-alongs that I want to participate in. The first one is the Make Nine 2024 Mal being hosted on Instagram by Amy of the Noble Character Crafts podcast. I really meant to participate in that all last year. I actually, when I grabbed this notebook to write some stuff down, I had a list of my Make Nine 2023 projects. I just never actually like publicly posted it. Um, and so this year I was determined to actually like think through and make a full list of projects that I wanted to work through. And so I did. I posted that on Instagram. Um, my plan is to make a separate video because this is going to be a fairly long video on its own. <laughs> A separate video where I'm going to be talking about all of the projects for my Make 9 board goal this year. <laughs> um, but I picked projects that all, I have yarn for all of them. Like, I, I have yarn for everything. So, um, if I finish everything on my Make 9 board, it would be phenomenal because that would be a significant chunk of my stash that I've used up. The second knit along that I want to work on, um, participate in this year is being hosted by, I believe it's Amy and Jen from Dandelion and Dogwoods. Amy is, um, Taylor S Studio podcast and she does knitting patterns. Um, I love her pattern designs. One of her designs is on my Make Nine board because I've wanted to knit it for a long time. <laughs> um, she announced in her most recent knitting podcast that they are hosting a um, sock knit along for this year that's like 24 and 24 or something like that where basically you knit a pair of socks each month throughout the year and the thing that I really loved about it is that their um, their requirements and things are so simple to participate in and as like a busy mom a busy wife I really appreciate that. Um, you can do shorty socks, you can do full length socks, you can do whips, which I, oh, that made me so, so happy. Because a lot of the other sock knit alongs, the reason I haven't participated in them is because the requirements were it was like a new full length pair of socks every single month. And I just can't do that. I, I, yeah. And the other part of it too is the majority of the socks that I knit for myself are shorty socks anyway. Um, so, but she was talking about it on her podcast and I, I just felt this sense of like excitement and relief <laughs> that this is a sock knit along that I can participate in. Um, and this is the one project I wanted to show you really quickly. Um, this is a sock whip that I've had for a hot minute. <laughs> um, I have the first sock completed and this is knit out of the Opal Vincent Van Gogh yarn. I I don't have the label in here. Um, it's just one of the colors from there. And then I've had the second sock fairly close to being done. I mean, I did probably this much the other day from the needles to here. Um, so I'm almost done with these. And it's so lovely because I have several different sock projects that um, have just been kind of languishing. I think I've got like three of them. Um, and I can use those. And so it, instead of having to go and try and cast on new projects, I can actually use these ones that I've already started. And I just, that was honestly like one of the, the big key like turning points for me. Uh, or not turning points, but like decision making points. <laughs> uh, um, but yes, so I'm planning to participate in that. I made a separate board um, to go with my Make Nine board of a bunch of sock knitting patterns that I would like to pull from for this year. And again, I'll talk about that in the other video. But I'm just, I'm very excited to participate in this knit along. Um, so, sock project. 
which is again being held in one of the gorgeous bags by Susan of Delightful Works and I love it. It's so cute. <laughs> um, so those are two of the knit-alongs, the, probably the main two knit-alongs I'm going to be participating in this year. And then the other thing, I forgot to write it down here, but the other thing is I want to massively scale back on any sort of test netting. Um, I really want to work on the projects that I want to work on. Um, and whenever I sign up for a test net, it's because I want to make the project. Like, don't get me wrong. But I need to focus, I want to focus more on the projects that I've been wanting to make for a while, which is kind of the next thing on the list, um, that I want to choose projects that have been in that sort of, I've been dreaming of making this category. I don't know if you do it the same way I do. I'm really bad about this. <laughs> I will have, I have this whole like, catalog list of not just creative projects but like projects in general um that I I think oh I would love to do that that sounds like so much fun and then immediately it's like everything else becomes a higher priority than that one example is so silly making applesauce one of my favorite books growing up was um Understood Betsy by I believe it's Dorothy Fisher and in there there's a uh clip segments bit where um, the little girl is helping to make applesauce and I remember reading that. I've read that book multiple times and just I loved it and ever since then I've wanted to make applesauce. <laughs> this is, I'm telling you it's silly. It's so silly. Do you know how easy it is to make applesauce? I made it two days ago and it was a piece of cake. It was so simple and easy and I have been wanting to make it for years and I kept putting it off because I was like, oh, that's just, I would love to do that. But And one of my hopes for 2024, this is both a personal and a knitting um, creative related one, is I want to embrace those I wish I could make that I'm dreaming of making that I'd love to make that um because those are the things that like mean so so much and instead of just putting those off all the time of actually doing them um like there's on my make nine board and we'll talk about it there's some uh, sweater projects that I've been wanting to do and I keep thinking about them and then I'll cast on other things first because I'm like these are higher priority. I don't know why my brain tends to work this way, but it's one thing I'm going to fight against this year is I really want to hone in on the, you know, I'm going to read this book because I've been wanting to read this book for ages. I'm going to make these things for my house because I've been wanting to do that. I'm going to make these knitting or sewing or whatever projects because I've been longing and dreaming of making them. And I just haven't. I keep putting them off and it's frustrating. Like it, it frustrates me but I keep doing it. So it's one of those things that I thought about this year that I was like, that's, I want to do those projects. Those like, the sort of like Pinterest board projects that you're like, oh, those would be really fun someday. Instead of like, just cut out the someday, like, just do them. <laughs> so that's, that's honestly like kind of the overarching theme of this to be real is that's why I want to stop buying yarn and stop buying patterns and sewing stuff is because I want to make those Anytime I make purchases, um, particularly for like yarn or fabric or whatever, I have the finished project in my head. I know exactly what I want to make with this stuff that I'm buying. And then it sits there and I don't always follow through. And so I want to do those things. So next year we're going to be kind of quick. Um, I have a feeling this is going to be a very, very lengthy video. Um, the first one, I want to organize and reorganize and reorganize and reorganize and clean up my crafting space in our um, office room until I can use it. We've been in this house for six months now and I've hardly used that space in there. It is just, it stresses me out so much I don't even want to be in there because it's just, it's so untidy and I feel like I make a step forward and it just, it doesn't seem to get there and... A big 
thing about being able to do particularly more sewing, which I very much want to do more sewing this year. That's another thing where 2024 needs to be a sewing year. I need to balance out my sewing and knitting. Um, and I haven't done like any sewing because I hate being in there. It's so messy and everything is just kind of unorganized and not put away. And part of that is, again, I have limited time. And for something like that, I need to not have a baby to worry about. I need to like focus and get everything sorted out and cleaned up and tidied. And so my hope is to spend, um, you know, maybe an hour or two for the next few weekends when my husband's home to watch the little boy cleaning and organizing and sorting it out so I can use it. <laughs> because yes, I really want to do some sewing this year. That is all that I have in terms of knitting plans. Um, I'm going to try and go through the personal plans a little bit faster because again, I have a feeling this video is going to be like an hour long and that's a lot of editing to do. <laughs> so um, if you're only here for the knitting creative sort of content, um, that's pretty much all that we have for today. Um, we're going to yeah, talk to a few personal goals. So first off, the second half of 2023 was honestly kind of rough. It was a really sort of nonstop time. We house hunting and bought a house and moving. And then um, as some of you know, I had a miscarriage last fall. And then it was like the holidays and everything. And it was, it just felt very, I don't know, like, like staticky in a way where it was just like non-stop and I think I got into a lot of bad habits personally uh, bad habits like spending a lot more time on my phone and devices and um I have not you know taken care of myself quite so well and I want to kind of get back to doing better about those things um so one of them is um, I am trying to work on my overall health. And um, I'm not unhealthy, if you would say. Like, I'm not sick all the time or anything like that. But I know that I could be doing better. So one of the things that I have been working on is um, we bought just a small little treadmill. And I have been trying to walk for at least 30 minutes a day. Um, Monday through Friday on the treadmill and to just get back into being a bit more active because that was part of the thing was over the end of the second half of 2023 as sort of a coping mechanism I ended up doing a lot of like knitting and that's not bad it just it involves a lot of sitting. I feel like I ended up doing becoming way less active than I normally am and um I feel a little bit of a trigger warning, I guess. I'm going to talk about my body a little bit and self-confidence and stuff. Since having a baby, um, obviously, I gained some weight and I have been quite a bit heavier and I have not really lost any of it. Um, a big reason for that is probably because I'm still nursing uh, and a lot of women just do not lose a bunch of weight until they stop nursing. Um, and... It's one of those things that obviously I would far rather continue to nurse my little boy than to bounce back to a whatever pre-baby body. But I also do think that part of the reason why I haven't lost any of that baby weight is because I have been, I have not been as active as I could be. And it has made me feel kind of self-conscious. And there's been like certain pictures that have been taken where it's like it gives me a look where I've got like a double chin and stuff and it just... It makes me really sad, and I don't want that to be the things that I see when I look at pictures. I want to see the joy of the moment and of getting to spend time with family and all of that, and I want to work on that. <laughs> so one of the ways that I am trying to do that, I want to really work on, on being as healthy as I can be, um, is I'm trying to walk at least 30 minutes a day, but my, my, my bare minimum goal is to walk on the treadmill every day, Monday through Friday, even if it's just for five minutes, and to just really get in the habit of walking every day. And for something like that, it, it really helps to have the treadmill, I've found, because the weather is really unpredictable. If it's really freezing cold outside, I don't wanna go for a walk. If it's blazing hot outside, I don't wanna go for a walk. If it's raining, I don't wanna go for a walk. And so by having the treadmill, it is a way that I can consistently get some form of active um, activity in my day. And 
I really appreciate that. Um, part of me has felt guilty because I'm like, I ought to be just outside walking. Um, and I, I'm shutting that down. <laughs> we got this treadmill. Um, it was actually part of my Christmas and birthday presents. It was something that I really wanted because it's not cheap. It was like $150. Um, but it's really simple. We can slide it under the couch and it put it out of the way and I can pull it out when I need it and put it back away. And I've been really liking it. Um, I've already noticed that I can, I'm able to do a bit better. Um, cause I feel like, especially with a little bit of extra weight that I have from having a baby, that even like walking was a little bit weird. Um, like I, I didn't feel like I was able to walk quite as quickly as I used to be able to without kind of getting out of breath. And I feel like I've already kind of been able to do that, um, a bit better. And it just, it makes me really happy. Um, it makes me feel like I'm doing well. And, um, yeah, my, my weight and my body has always kind of been a little bit of a sensitive topic or issue for me. And, um, I didn't realize how much of a hit that all took with having a baby. Um, like, obviously I love having a baby. I want to have more babies. It's great. It's fantastic. But, um, 2023 was my first like full calendar year of being a mom and there were a lot of things that <sighs> there were it, it it was not easy it was hard it was a um an adjustment year like I love being a mom I love having my little boy but there were a lot of things like mentally and emotionally that I didn't expect to have as a um side effect if you will of having a child and um I didn't realize how a lot of those things had affected me. Um, and one of the biggest ones was that I, my body changed. Like it's, it's gonna do that. Your body does this amazing, miraculous thing of having a baby, of growing a little human. And it's such a gift and a privilege, but it changes things. And I think that that was the thing that I didn't fully expect was how much it kind of changed how I view my body and then also again like it changes because you gain weight while you're pregnant because your body needs to be able to support this new life that's growing and um yeah it just it changes things and I don't think that I fully realized how much that was going to affect me and part of that is again because of the weight change and the body change and stuff um a lot of my clothes, I, I've mentioned this many times on the podcast, a lot of my clothes didn't fit. And that really tanked my my sort of self-esteem in a way. Um, I, had, I had worked very, very hard to get to the place where I was really confident and comfortable with my body. I was wearing all these cute dresses, really embracing the like feminine, like 1950s sort of inspired style. And I had worked so hard to get to the place where I didn't hate my body. <laughs> and then I had a baby and all of my dresses and clothes and things no longer fit. And I did not think I was gonna get emotional, but. <laughs> Um, like I said, none of my clothes fit the way that they used to and I had to figure out new clothes to figure out, um, new ways of, of fitting it and I, I did not expect that to be something that I was going to struggle with so much, but it has actually been a really, a really hard struggle. <laughs> um, let's put it that way. Um, and so, again... I, um, one of the things that I want to work on this year is to really embracing the, my new motherhood wardrobe, my new motherhood uniform, if you will. And, um, that's part of why I want to get back into sewing because I need more clothes that fit. <laughs> and I hate, I hate shopping. Like store-bought clothes so rarely actually fit me the way that I want them to. And that has been a struggle my entire life. Um... And so I want to get back into sewing and I want to make myself more pretty feminine dresses that are nursing friendly because that's honestly a big thing is that a lot of my clothes and stuff, well, pre-pregnancy, a lot of my clothes were very fitted. So obviously when your body changes and you're, you weigh a little bit more, 
you're not gonna fit those things. Um, if I had been into the more slouchy, oversized fashion style, I don't think it would have been as big of an issue. But of course, because I was in the 1950s cinched in waist, nice poofy skirt, like, oh, I love that. Um, it's challenging. <laughs> and so my next my next goal is it's kind of fits into this where I'm, I'm walking every day being more intentionally being a little bit more active. The next one is um, I wrote it down as embrace and celebrate a motherhood wardrobe and um, really make sure that everything that I bring into my wardrobe whether it's purchased or made is motherhood friendly and by that I mean nursing friendly because I am planning to have several more kids, Lord willing, um, and so there's not really any point in creating things that then as soon as I get pregnant or I'm nursing again, I can no longer wear, because um, that's just going to keep, it's going to be a constant drain on me mentally and emotionally. And one of the biggest things that I did that was actually so, so good, and I am so glad that I finally did it, is... Um, I think it was after the new year, I went through my entire wardrobe and I had a box of clothes and things of like pre-pregnancy clothes, dresses, it's mostly dresses that I have made for myself. And I went through that whole box and I pulled out things that were like my favorite, favorite ones and I got rid of the rest of them. And I was like, cause it's been weighing on me a lot that I don't fit those. And um, I, saved like my favorite ones. We stuck them up in the attic and those are my, if I ever fit them in again someday, that's fine. If not, they're there. I don't have to think about them. They are out of my bedroom, out of my closet, out of my wardrobe. And the other thing too was I went through my wardrobe and I got rid of all of the things that just made me feel sad when I put them on. And most of them were like skirts and things that I got at the tail end of my pregnancy. And then I wore them quite a bit postpartum. And just wearing them just made me feel schlubby. Like that's, that's the only way I can think of putting it. Um, Cause I would wear those skirts with like a, a cotton t-shirt and it just, it does, they do not make me feel feminine. They do not make me feel good about myself. Um, and so every time I would look at those skirts or wear those skirts, it just made me feel sad. And part of me was like, oh, I, I need to keep them cause I need to have like, you know, be able to use them and whatnot. There's still got life left in them. And I went through and I got rid of like all of that. And I filled up a big box of things for my sister to try on next time I see her. And that's all in a box. It's not in my wardrobe anymore. And so it, I really massively dwindled down my wardrobe. Um, it's only got like four or five dresses in there or something. Um, and it made me feel so much better. Like, I did not realize how much, like, those things had been weighing on me and just making me feel guilty and terrible. Um, and so I did that, and it just, such relief. Like, I already, I feel so much better, and I feel like I want to make things for myself again. And I'm so glad that I did it. Um... Yeah, it was one of those things where I was able to like look at the skirts and things and I was like, they serve their time. Um, they very much served, served their time. I wore them constantly. Um, and so I'm, I was, I'm very grateful that I had them, but they have now, they need to go to somebody else's house. So I just took them to Goodwill and they're gone, they're gone. And I don't have to worry about them anymore. So <laughs> this is such a long video. If you're still here, thank you so much. Um, but yes, so I want to work on finding sort of a good like mom uniform, if you will, which is probably mostly dresses with buttons or snaps down the front to the waist. That's probably what it's going to be. Um, and then make or buy enough to feel that I can be feminine and well dressed every single day. Um, that's what I'm going to work towards this year. That's why I want to be able to have my sewing and crafting space cleaned up because I want to do some more sewing. I want to craft myself a mom wardrobe <laughs> and um, for it to be something that I can feel happy and healthy and confident in every single day. Um, yeah, so let's quickly try and get through these next ones. Um, 
Another like big homemaking thing that I want to do is I want to work towards thinking of my house as my cozy little woodland animal cottage. Um, I have probably a decent amount of, of emotional and mental sort of baggage and stuff from growing up um, involving housework and cleaning and all of that. And it has been a struggle since I got married um, to really try to reframe how I think about my house and to realize that it is my house and it is my home and I can do things my way not everybody else's way. And so that's something that I really want to work towards. Um, I was watching Stephanie of Texas Beach Nits, again, um, <laughs> on one of her recent podcast episodes, and she was talking about um, picture books or something, and she mentioned um, the Miss Susie Squirrel or something book, and she talked about how she liked, she loved that book when she was little because she liked imagining um, that she had, like, a little house to take care of. And it for whatever reason, that really made me stop and think, because I'm very much that person. Like, all growing up, I would read these books and stories about, like, little animals that lived in their cottage, or little kids that were running around and they built their house and stuff, and I always used to dream and think about, like, oh, someday when I have my house. And now that I'm at that someday, I, I feel like I lost sight of that a lot, and I haven't, like, loved my home. And... I really want to work towards that. I want to love taking care of my home and making it a cozy, wonderful place to live in. Um, so I don't know all the ins and outs of how I'm going to do that, but that's something I want to work on this year. And then the last three are pretty quick. Um, I'm going to be switching how much I'm on Instagram. I'm going to be changing it up to checking Instagram once a week on Thursdays. Um, I just need to shut off some of the information overload that's happening in my brain by constantly like googling anything that I think of that I'm curious about or being on Instagram and checking Instagram three or four times a day or anything else. I just very much want to massively reduce the amount that I am on the internet and I have gone back and forth with completely getting rid of Instagram but I really want to participate in some of these like community knit along things like the make nine and um, the dandelion and dogwood sock knitting knit along. And I can't do those if I'm not on Instagram. So my compromise is I'm going to check it once a week and then that can be the day where I post any pictures that I have. And instead, which rolls on to the next one, I want to focus more on my blog. I miss the blogging days. I miss being able to read and follow along with blogs. Like, I I have so many, like, treasured memories of that. Like, I discovered sewing blogs when I was a teenager, and that was a big reason why I got into sewing, um, was just because I loved and I was so inspired by all these people sharing and talking about their projects. And I want to get back to that. So my hope and goal is to write one to two blog posts every month um, about, you know, motherhood, homemaking, creative living, knitting, sewing, books, that sort of a thing. Um, so that that's something I, I did pretty good last year. I think I actually wrote probably 10 to 12 blog posts last year, which was, was kind of my goal. I wanted to write at least 12 blog posts. Um, and so this year I want to continue that on and just up it a little bit more, do more. And then the last one involves another wonderful gift from my mother-in-law. Um, she gave me a one line a day, um, five year memory book. And I've heard about these for a while and I've wanted to have one for a while. And now I do. And it's really cool because basically what you do is you, the dates up at the top and then you put the year here and then you, this section is what you do. And then next year, you fill out this section, and next year you fill out that section, and so on and so forth, so that then um, over time it can be something where you're like, I was doing this on February 24th um, in 2024, and then you can kind of see over the years like what you're doing each day um, throughout the year, and I'm really, really happy. She gifted it to me as like a New Year's present, and I want to keep up with it this year. So. That is the end of this video. It has been an incredibly lengthy video, so if you are still here and you listened all the way through, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Perfect timing because the baby's waking up. <laughs> um, but yes, the next podcast episode should be um, 
more like a regular podcast episode. The next video I'm planning to make for this channel is the Make 9 video. Um, that should be coming out sometime in the next couple of weeks, probably around the end of January. Um, but yeah. <laughs> I gotta go. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.